In this episode, I'm talking about how to get people to help you while you're networking. In my newsletter and in my emails, I have people saying, Greg, I've been doing this networking thing. I've been connecting. I've been trying to find people. I've been reaching out. But ultimately, I'm trying to find a new opportunity. I'm trying to expand my network or I'm trying to make connections for a new job or some new business opportunity or something like that. How do I get people to help me at some point? How, how do I make that happen? How do I turn this networking into opportunity? I'm going to talk a little bit about that today, and I want to start off in a different place, and I'll, I'll get to the answer to the question, but I, I want to start in a little different place. The reason is I tell my readers, I tell my subscribers that I'm going to give you networking tips. Uh, I actually say networking strategies and tactics, but I think people focus on the tactics. And what I mean by that is everybody wants that tip or that hack or that tactic that's going to automatically make people do something for them. And the problem is networking is not like that. Uh, there's no, there are networking things you can do. There are little things you can do. I can give you all sorts of tips and tricks and tactics. There are things that will make it hopefully easier or maybe things you haven't thought of. And at the same time, you have to have a strategy and networking is about strategy. It's about long-term uh, focus. It's about long-term relationships in terms of professional relationships. It doesn't just happen quickly. There is no magic message that I can give you to put in an email or a LinkedIn message that's going to make people suddenly say, oh, I want to I wanna help you. I can't wait to help you. It takes time. It takes effort. It's going to take a lot from you. That's not something that everybody wants to hear. I think they all show up and they think I'm going to hear something that's going to change my life. And honestly, networking can change your life. I, I believe that networking has changed my life. I know a lot of people networking has changed their life. And it wasn't just one tip that did it. It was putting in place a networking process. It was putting in place uh, things that you do every single day, habits and, and stuff like that. So I can't just get on here and say, here's the way that I can get people to help you. What I can do is tell you what will get people to help you or want to help you in the long run. But again, it's going to take some effort. It's going to take some work. I'm going to give you a bunch of suggestions today on this. And we're going to start from this place of uh, psychology. Okay. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story. Robert Cialdini is a, is a researcher. He's a doctor. He's written a book called Influence. It's the psychology of persuasion. And what he has done is break down how do you persuade people to do things. One of the key components in his book, or one of the main things of persuasion, is reciprocity. People will help you if they're reciprocating, meaning they will help you if you've helped them, which means you have to start by giving. In your networking, you have to start by being the one who gives something to somebody first. In his book, Cialdini talks about a, a situation, and you've probably all been in this situation or you maybe experienced something like this. They did a study on restaurants, and these were. Uh, mostly Asian restaurants. And what they found is when they left the fortune cookie or a mint or something like that on the bill. So you've had your dinner, you sat down, you're ready to get the bill. The server comes and brings the bill and they leave a fortune cookie or a mint or some other small thing like that. The customers tip more when they got that small gift than when they didn't. They were able to prove this through this study. So it means basically that you feel like you're getting something, however small it is from the server, and you're more inclined to tip higher than you would if you didn't get that. And I can tell you personally, my wife is a musical actress, musical theater actress. Uh, she's a singer by, by trade. That's what she's done her whole life, which means she's waited a lot of tables. As she's waited tables, she tells me 
every good server knows if there's something you can give to a customer, maybe it's a free dessert or maybe it's a free appetizer or maybe it's a free drink, whatever you can do, you do that and you are going to get a better tip and you are going to have a more loyal customer. Those customers will come back. And this isn't just servers. This is people who own the restaurants will typically do that for certain customers because they know if they do that small thing, they're going to come back and they'll make even more money because they're going to be a more loyal customer. Reciprocity is everywhere. We all want to reciprocate. When somebody does something for us, we feel like the karmic scales are out of balance. And maybe you don't believe in karma, fine, whatever. But the idea is something with the universe is out of balance. Somebody gave you something, you feel like you're in some sort of debt to them until you give them something back. And this isn't about favors and making people owe you because we're not talking about something like that. We're talking about giving without conditions, meaning you're not going to say, I'm going to do this for you if you do this for me. It's not going to be that quid pro quo type of thing. It's going to be talking to your connections and finding something you can give to them. And it doesn't have to be big. I think that's the key thing with the Cialdini study is it wasn't a huge thing, a, a mint, right? A, a, a fortune cookie. It's not a huge thing. You don't get a ton of value as the customer from that but you feel like you've been given something and you you naturally, whether you think of it or not, you wanna give back. That's the answer in networking. And it's hard because the question then becomes, what can I give? People will think I don't have anything to give because I'm networking with somebody who's maybe at a higher level in terms of the organization I wanna be in. Maybe they're farther along in their career. Maybe they're older than I am. Maybe they're just somebody who's in a higher level of power and you think, I don't have anything to give. I'll tell you, you do. Everybody has something to give. You have several things to give. And I'm going to talk about some of those things to give you some ideas and, and break it down and make you feel a little bit better that you do have something to give and maybe encourage you to give to, to start to get people feeling like they want to give back, right? And again, you're not going to keep score. You're not going to keep track. That's not what this is about. This is about just making it an intentional part of your networking. And that's the point when people, as you're networking, are going to turn around after you've given to them and they're going to say, man, it's been such a great conversation. You've given me so much. I've gotten so much out of this. What can I do for you? That's where you want to be because that takes away any pressure of you having to pitch to them, right? If they're asking you, hey, how can I help you? You're not really pitching to them. You're saying, Here, here's how you can help me. But let's go back to the giving because I want to give you examples of what you can give. Maybe you haven't thought of these before because I think you'll realize these are a lot easier things to give than, than you maybe thought of before. There's... I'm going to start with three things because this is a good model. I've seen this before. Uh, Hannah Morgan has talked about this a lot. She and I know each other online. We've never met in person, but we've connected on LinkedIn and through newsletters and emails and stuff. I know she uh, is a subscriber of this newsletter because she's she's reached out to me. But um, she talks about AIR, A-I-R, give AIR. And what it stands for is advice, introductions, or recommendations. And I love that because that's so simple. So let's talk about the first one, advice. So let's imagine you're talking to a connection and we're gonna assume in your networking strategy that this isn't just a random one-off conversation, but it's somebody you've connected with. Maybe they're a, a dormant tie that you've reconnected with and you're having a phone or an in-person conversation or it's a, a new connection, maybe somebody you've been introduced to and you're talking to them and you've asked them about themselves, right? That's a given. You're, you're going to ask them about yourself. So you're going to listen to what they say. And they're going to talk about a problem they're working on at work or a problem they're having that they, they're looking for some advice on. So give them your advice. It doesn't even have to be right. The, and, and you can say that. You can say like, well, my opinion is this. I mean, I could be wrong, but here's what I would do if it were me. Whether they do that or not, they're still going to feel good that you gave them some direction and a different point of view. So advice is great. Advice is even better if you're talking to somebody that you know something about. So maybe you're networking about work and you're, you're talking to somebody else who's in your industry or your, your field of, of profession, and you're going to say, well, here's how we solve this problem at my company. Uh, 
you know, you, you give that out. And I'm not telling you to give company secrets away. What I'm telling you is give advice that makes sense that you could, you know, reasonably give to somebody else and they could do something with. Again, they may or they may not, but they're going to at least be thankful you gave them advice. The next thing in that AIR acronym is, is an introduction. As you talk to somebody, do you know somebody you could introduce them to? You're sitting there trying to meet somebody else or meet somebody new, but wouldn't it be awesome to be able to introduce your connection to somebody you know? Now, with introductions, you want to be careful, right? You, you want to introduce people, but you want to make sure they're all open to introductions. And what I mean by that is if you're talking to your networking connection and you say, hey, you should meet Greg, go talk to Greg and make sure that Greg is open to introductions and, and tell your other connection that say, you know, hey, I, I will, um, you know, I can, um, I can introduce you to this person, but I just want to make sure you understand I'm going to check to make sure it's okay with them first. And I'll let you know. And that, that they'll respect that because they would want the same thing to happen if you were introducing someone to them. So you got advice, you got introductions. The last one is recommendations. Did you read a good book lately that this person might want to read? Do you have a recommendation for a certain product or service for this person? Do you recommend a certain vendor? Do you recommend another you know, company? Do you have a recommendation that, that you can give to the person? And again, it doesn't matter if they act on it or not. You're still giving them those, those things. So remember the acronym AIR. Those are some good things you can give. I think in addition to that, some other things are, and this could fall under the, the realm of, of advice, but I always say ideas. Give away your ideas. If you have an idea for a certain service or a product or something that you think would be great, give it away to the person. And you think, oh my gosh, I'm going to give all my good ideas away, my billion dollar idea. Like, trust me, if, if you had a billion dollar idea and you weren't doing anything with it, it's not worth a billion dollars. Give it away to somebody. It's, it's worth something to them and it could bring you more opportunity when they turn around to help you. You can also give them support. They might be struggling with something and you can talk to them about how, um, you know, you're there for them. You, you're there to talk to, you know, even if you don't have any solutions, you can uh, help them out and, and just be a sounding board. If all else fails, give them your attention. The, the people that are the best people to talk to are the ones that pay attention to you when you talk to them. I, I think if you were to poll people and say, who are the, who are the best conversationalists? If you broke that down and studied it, you'd actually find that the people who listen and give people their attention are probably identified as the best conversationalists because everybody likes to talk to somebody who's listening to them. So if all else fails, give your attention. Again, it's little. It, you may not think that that's much, but if you're listening, if you're truly part of the conversation, if the people enjoy talking to you, that's a gift in and of itself. If it's a good conversation, people are probably going to want to help you just from the good conversation. And there's, you could do tons of other stuff. You could, you could get way bigger on the, what can I give you type of thing? Uh, you could give your time, you could, um, you know, you're giving them time in a conversation anyway, but, but there's tons of things you could give them, but those are little things that I, I really, I like to focus on those small things because they're, they're pretty easy to do. Now, if you walk away from the conversation, and you feel like you haven't given them anything. And then you think of later, you're like, oh my gosh, I totally remember this article that I read the other day. And I was talking to Greg about this certain topic. I should send that to him. Great. Send it to him. You don't have to give people stuff in the moment all the time. You may think of something later. You may be reading something later. You may be, you may come across something that you go, oh, that would be perfect for Greg. Send it to him. Say, hey, based on our conversation, I thought of you when I read this and I wanted to send it along. And number one, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, he's still thinking of me. What a, what a great guy. And he sent me this. That's awesome. These are the little things that you do to get people to go, hey, how can I help you? Now, they may not always say, how can I help you? But at least you know that either consciously or subconsciously, you've given to them and they're feeling like they need to reciprocate. And so if they don't say it and you, you do need to reach out and say, hey, I need help with this, they're, they're more likely to help you out. 
they're 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 probably not going to be like ah, I don't have any time. They're going to be like ah, I remember Greg's been giving me all this stuff and attention, and we've been talking. It's great. I really love to help him. How can I help him? And there's more to getting help because you know sometimes getting help depends on being easy to help. So we can talk about that in another episode. But for now, think about what you can give, no matter how small it is. Remember the restaurant study because that's good to keep in mind and, and, and remember that it doesn't have to be a big thing. Find something you can give. If you can't give it in the conversation, give it in the follow-up. And once you start doing that, people are going to want to help you and you'll get more opportunities than you probably can handle. That's it for this episode. Have a great week. I hope you're getting out there. You're connecting with people. I hope your network is growing. As always, subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the newsletter, subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow me wherever you can find me. I'm here to help you, to teach you to be a better network. Have fun, go out, meet some new people.